last video we left off with this building here and there was a mystery concerning this building as far as what the building was and what the location was of this building and I had a theory that this was a courthouse uh, near the Military Street Bridge and of course I found out that since then that that theory was wrong. This is the original Port Huron High School that uh, was located uh, right where the SC4 College main building is today. The thing that was confusing me about uh, the location where the high school uh, was is that the background where the schooner masts are from Black River just didn't seem like you'd be able to see that from the, the angle of the uh, picture here. But when you realize that back then there was no obstruction between the back of the high school and the river, it makes sense. Here's an actual photo of this high school. And you can see it looks just like the sketch. This high school was designed and built by Stephen Probit. It took just 11 months. It cost over just a little over $40,000. had four stories and a basement. He made all the brick himself. Contracted it in September of 1869. It was completed in September of 1870 and burned to the ground in 1873. He then went on to redesign, uh, or rebuild I should say, uh, the next high school in 1874. It burned to the ground in 1906, whereas the present building was built in 1908. You can also see the Black River that would have been behind it, and uh, it would make sense. You could see this schooner's dock there, and the mass of the schooners that, that it shows in the picture. Okay, we have that mystery solved. Let's go on with our little tour through Port Huron to the west side of the 100 block of Huron Avenue. This is what it looks like today. Not a very big block, but they used to pack a few stores in there at one time. Here's a little earlier picture showing the condos being built there. Before the condos in 2009, this is what it looked like. Pretty nice entranceway to Black River though. But when I was growing up, this is what it looked like. And Fox Jewelry Store was the anchor of that block. Of course it's tore down uh, now, but here's a couple of pictures that they took of the building just before it was tore down. This was the side entrance. And of course here's the interior. Of course it's been emptied out, but it gives you an idea what the interior looked like. So we went from looking like this uh, today uh, to this uh, when the Fox Jewelry Store was there. And you can see the signage that Fox had on the side of the building quite prominent, even though right now it looks like it's a little faded. And at night it looked like this. You can make out the box neon sign there and the windows are always lit very brightly and they had a nice display of jewelry in there. It really showed up at night. Uh, my wife and I uh, used to walk by there quite often. She had an apartment across from the library and I, uh, the old library, the museum. And I had a home on uh, Michigan Street and we would walk by there. And every time we would get near that store, this was before we were married, she would kind of lead me over to that window. I have no idea why. Well, yes I do too. There have been three uh, major anchors on this corner over the years. We just looked at the first one, the Fox Jewelry. And the second one is First National Bank that was on this corner. The bank was established on this corner in the 1870s. But it wasn't this beautiful building here, it was in a different building. In 1879, it moved directly across the street to the northwest corner to this location here. And we looked at this uh, location in a previous video. And they stayed at this location until 1904, when their brand new building that we just looked at uh, was uh, built on the southwest corner again, uh, where they were originally located. Let's take another look at this building. Uh, you can see the up on the top of the building, it says National Bank Building, just right into the uh, concrete there. You can see by these railings going on both sides of the building that uh, you had access to a lower floor of the basement. What well, was down there, I'm not sure whether it was actually part of the bank where the public could go or if it was private entrances. 
This photo here, you can see a, a group of businessmen just milling outside the bank, contemplating their investments, possibly. In this photo, we have the answer to what was in that basement floor, at least on this side of the building. It appears to be a Western Union Telegraph and Cable Office. Also, you'll see here a couple of bicycles. Uh, there's one bike. And here's uh, another bike. Bicycles were very popular during that time period. It was a very easy and inexpensive way to get around. It was also a popular sport. Cycle clubs, cycle races, and the entire industry devoted to the manufacture of bicycles and accessories made this period an exciting and profitable one. In this photo, we see members of one Port Huron Bicycle Club ready to take off for a race. All right, let's get back to the bank now. The first National Exchange Bank was a forerunner of the Michigan National Bank. Here we have a photo promoting the Liberty Bonds during World War I in an effort to help the United States government finance the cost of the war. Liberty Bonds, the best investment in the world. I think this is a wonderful photo showing off the bank and its setting in that particular era. Uh, we can see the streetcar. We can see this fellow ride the bicycle here in the foreground. We can see it's still a horse and buggy era the horse and buggy there and the old bridge and we see this lady going up the stairs in her long dress and hat also notice the difference in architecture in this building it's uh, different than anything that was downtown at that time quite a unique looking building compared to the rest of them here's another photo uh, taken a little further away uh, of the bank and the thing that's unusual about this photo here if you look up in the sky you see it's a bird it's a plane it's a it's a plane but not really this is what's known as a trick postcard back then today it would be called Photoshop we saw one in one of our previous videos of the uh, Taj Mahal going over Niagara Falls it, it was the type of postcard that was quite popular with the public this photo also gives you a good uh, view of the signage. If you were coming from the south going north, you could see the sign above the bank. Uh, here you can just read the word national from the back. But I imagine it said first national. Here we're looking uh, north down here in Avenue and we see the return flight of this plane. Here's an advertising card dated November 1909. First National Exchange Bank is offering the key to wealth as an incentive for using its services. It says, the key to wealth, continual saving at compound interest is a guarantee against the poorhouse. It establishes competence, assures comfort. It means a happy old age. Happier, happier families, independence, better habits, cleaner lives, good times, thrifty and prosperity. It means more to the solution of the hard time problem than all the questions that have been discussed in the halls of Congress. We offer you the key to wealth through the service of our bank. Be sure and make good use of it. Sign First National Exchange Bank. If you're wondering about the word exchange in the First National Bank, uh, it was added in 1890 when the bank was reorganized and went from First National Bank to First National Exchange Bank. This advertising card is out of the T.J. Gaffney collection. And uh, while I'm at it, I might as well give his book a plug. He's got some wonderful pictures in here of postcards throughout the years for Port Sharon, 1880 and to, uh, 1960. So if you get a chance, pick one up. It'll be uh, a lot of fun to look through. In the early to mid-1880s, uh, we find the third anchor to this corner, and that was the City Hotel. And it looks like a, a, a pretty nice building. It's uh, always nice to see a card like this, but it's so much better to, to have a picture which we don't have. But one of the things that we do have is a uh, rendering, a digital rendering. Uh, Samuel Clore's class 
uh, architectural class at uh, SC4 does this and they have been doing a bunch of the old buildings of Port Sharon. And here's one right here of the city hotel and what it might have looked like back in the day. In this very early photo of Port Sharon uh, in this location, you can see the location is uh, vacant. There's nothing there at all. Across the street there, you can see the uh, Central Hotel. But uh, this location, there wasn't anything there. All right, let's go to the opposite end of the block now. And in uh, all the late 80s and 90s, it, uh, it looked like this here. In the 1960s and 50s, uh, the cotton shop was located here. It was there for a lot of years. Then in the 1940s, uh, Mirrors Drugstore uh, occupied that building. The building that Mirrors was in certainly wasn't one of the original buildings of Port Sharon. But this building was original and had been there for a long time. And the business you see there in this postcard is United Cigar Store, which also had been there a very long time. It was there in 1936, uh, all through the 20s, and possibly even uh, 1919, 1918, right around that area. Looking at the architecture of this building, you see uh, the front is very distinctive where the windows are on the second floor. Uh, you have an indentation around the windows, and it's pretty easy to identify the building. This building here has also seen four different military street bridges. There's this bridge here, and then there's this bridge uh, here as well. This one here shows the overhead structure for the streetcars. The side of this building always offered a great opportunity for advertisement. Here we see Schoolcraft Real Estate, and Schoolcraft Real Estate was located in that building uh, as well. At one time it was right over a United Cigar Store, and another time it was next door. The owner of this business was V.J. Schoolcraft. This is what this brochure has to say about it uh, in 1900. Uh, E.J. Schoolcraft of Schoolcraft & Company, the popular real estate dealers, and whose office is located just north of the bridge on Huron Avenue, is the most extensive real estate dealer in the city. Personally, Mr. Schoolcraft is a pleasant gentleman to meet and one of the best businessmen of the city. And apparently Mr. Schoolcraft had a few dollars in his pocket too, because this is the home he lived uh, in, in on Military Street. Pretty nice home. In this photo here, we see the Red Arrow Division of our boys coming home from World War I. But we also can take a look at the building and uh, the business as well. You can see that the United uh, Cigar Store is still there. And this also gives you a little better look at the architecture. You can see the inset around the windows quite clearly in this photo. You may remember in an earlier video and at an earlier time that United Cigar uh, Store was on the northwest corner of Quay and Huron. In this photo we come to the third bridge that this building has overlooked. And also we see a, a tremendous amount of advertisement on the side of the building, a little more than usual. We see clothing and tailoring by John Wolfstein. And of course we have our uh, school craft and company real estate office, uh, very prominent, the, the biggest advertisement on the building. We see he now sells fire insurance, lowest rates, losses promptly paid. We also see there's an attorney there, W.E. Leonard. We also see a larger sign, or part of a larger sign, by Wolfstein, uh, Taylor, and Clothing. And then we see a uh, boatwork sign, and it looks like it says, On Short Notice. And to the left of that, we see uh, a sign from somebody saying, Interior Decorating Specialty. So there's a lot on that wall. Here we see the building we've been looking at butts up uh, right against the First National Bank building. 
And in this postcard, you can see a little different signage uh, here. It still has a Wolfstein uh, logo on the side of the building, and that's it. And in this very early photo, we see the fourth bridge that this building has overlooked. And the only signage we see is uh, the one on top advertising the fruit house. And you can see it's the same building. You can see the indentation around the windows quite clearly. That's the central hotel in the background you see there in the white. All right, we've looked at both ends of the block, and in our next video we'll look at what was in between. And then perhaps we'll get over to Quay Street as well.